I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God. Yeah. God. Your 
Down, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He 
It maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This afternoon we want to 
welcome you to the service of thanksgiving for Renford Mark Anderson Harper. We want to welcome the Permanent Secretary acting in Prime Minister's Office, National Security, Ms. Paula Bayer, the Reverend Dr. Nigel Taylor, Ombudsman of Barbados, Selma Husbands, Cabinet Secretary, Heads of Departments, members of the clergy, welcome to one and all. Today we come to celebrate, though it's painful, we want to still recognize and remember the beautiful smile you're seeing on your leaflets, which was a testimony of a wonderful personality and a wonderful person. And so today, as we come in this service, as difficult as it is, we still believe there are reasons to rejoice having known Mark as a person. So today, I pray that what we do in this service will be a means of drawing comfort to the hearts of those who grieve. We're going to invite our first elder of the Eastland Seventh-day Adventist Church, of which Mark was a member, the Sherwin Walker to give us a prayer of comfort, then we'll sing our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And shall we pray? Again, Lord, we find ourselves at a very uncomfortable junction in life. Where there are more questions than answers. Where persons are hurting. And we know it is not a part of your plan that man should die. But because of sin, these things happen. But I want to pray, dear Lord, that those who are now mourning and grieving, that you would bring comfort and that you would bring peace to their troubled souls. We know, dear Father, that it is challenging at this time. And as such, Persons are in need of answers. Answers that mortal man do not have. But we pray, dear Lord, that you will grant grace for every trial. And that you will grant that peace that indeed passeth all understanding. And those who are of the immediate family and those who are workmates and those who are neighbors, would understand that this is the lot of all of us. And what is most important is that we have a favorable relationship with you. That when occurrences of this nature should come our way, we would find that peace, that comfort that you've promised to give us. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassion, they fail not, as Thou hast been Thou for.
We're going to follow in our programs with our tributes at this time. And our program will continue on and out, so let's continue to follow as it is written. Tribute to Renford Mark Anderson Harper, Permanent Secretary Acting, Prime Minister's Office, National Security, Ms. Paula Bayer, Reverend Dr. Nigel Taylor, Ombudsman. Ms. Salma Husband, Cabinet Secretary, Heads of Department, the Ministers in the Seventh day Adventist Church, Administrative Staff, Security Officers, and Security Guards, National Security families of Mr. Harper and friends. Good afternoon. Never would I imagine that today, December 20th, 2023, this afternoon, that I would be standing here to deliver a tribute on behalf of our dear friend and colleague, Mark as he was well known. Why, what is this saying to all of us who are gathered here in this service of Thanksgiving for the life of Mark? A timely reminder to all of us about the frailty of life. In Psalms 90 verse 12 it says, Teach us to number days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Or as the living Bible puts it, teach us to number our days and recognize how they are and help us to spend them as we should. In Ephesians 5 verse 15 says, so be careful how you live. Renford Mark Anderson Harper started work in the public service of Barbados on January 8th, 1980 as a security guard with the then Defense and Security Division. He was appointed security guard on July 1st, 1990. Senior Security Guard, December 1st, 1998. Security Officer 3, July 1st, 2003. Security Officer 2, March 1st, 2015. Senior Security Officer, March 1st, 2018. He proceeded on pre-retirement leave on October 12, 2023. Mark always had the thirst for further education to further enhance his skills and the will to succeed. So Mark and I embarked on a number of courses together I would have entered the service a couple of weeks before him 
on December 15, 1979, he jokingly said to me, he could have had started at that time with me as well, but he wanted to enjoy Christmas with all the drinks and ham. You know that was at that time, eating the ham, but not now. We pursue a number of courses together, such as supervisory management and Microsoft Office, which included Word, Word Excel, data processing, and at the Erdogan Teachers Training College. A certificate in security management at the then University of the West Indies School of Continued Studies, we were, where we were joined by Mr. Jerome Boring, retired security officer Vaughan, and Mr. Anthony Vaughan, deceased. And we continue further to further pursue a diploma in security administration with the Caribbean security of professionals. Mark then went on to the University of West Indies to pursue a degree in public administration, while I went on to do a diploma in Christian ministry at the Caribbean Wesleyan College. Mark, the cricketer. Defense and security had a cricket team which was captained by retired security officer Malcolm Tate. And it had players like Tyron Knight, Roger Ennis, Arlerton Murray, Antonio Green, and Mark, just to mention a few. The story was told that Mark was an opening batsman with Antonio Green. And according to the, to the source, Mark used to score a lot of runs. His cricket clothes were always lily white, and his favorite fielding spot was first or second slip. And the reason for that is that at the end of the day's play, Mark clothes remain lily white. The source further stated that when he did finally catch a ball in the slips from the opposing team, he used to catch the ball in his right hand and shake the left hand, too hot to handle. Mark, the training and development officer. Mark never believed in claiming the ladder of success and then kicking it down so that others would not climb, but firmly believed that he should carry along others with him. As senior security officer, he believed that a security guard should, not, should, not, should no longer be labeled as someone walking around with a bunch of keys at his side with a baton, but should be skillful and well-rounded. He was a believer that the public service should be a model of excellence, innovation, service, and leadership. So he embarked in seeking out courses for officers and security guards under his charge. From one week, seminars for new intake, diploma course at Barbados Institute of Management and Productivity by map for one security officer, two, two security officers, three, and one senior guard. Supervisory management for six senior security guards, Barbados Institute and Pro Productivity by map. Training for security guards in protective security, Caribbean vocational qualification, CVQ level two. Career Development Institute, courses in Microsoft Office through the Learning Development Directorate for Security Officers, Senior Security Guards, and Security Guards. Effective Writing Skills for Security Officers through the Learning Development Directorate. Mark the unselfish person who seeks 
to involve others. I recall in 2019, Mr. Mark Franklin, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Prime Minister's Office at the time, and Mark were selected to attend a workshop for public officers through the Learning and Development Directorate in Alternate Dispute Resolution. And Mark nominated me instead of himself, and which today I am thankful to him to, to give an away to me because one of my takeaways that I have carried with me in this course, Alternative Dispute Resolution, as I proceed on procurement leave into full-time pastoral ministry. The course has helped me in my job as Security Officer 1 in operations and continue to help me as I counsel persons in my church and my church community and its environs. Thank you, Mark, again. Mark carried the banner of national security very high, well above his shoulders, embracing the motto and the vision of the department. He fought through many storms, persevered, and succeeded. Mark recalled that many long nights and days were spent with Miss Wendy Eversley, retired senior administrative officer finishing assignments, when together they were doing the course Commitment for Results, CFR, online all the way from India with a different time zone from Barbados. Mark pays special attention in the service in all areas of the department, investigation, the investigation section, daily operation, and the drill squad, which is bearing his body today to the final resting place. Mark also ensured that he engaged the department stakeholders in giving security advice and deploying security personnel at areas to, have, to adequately cover, give security coverage. He also ensured that security officers conducting security audits did them, did them properly informative and gave the best recommendation in integrated security management, which is inclusive of access control, intruder detection, CCTV, fire protection, etc. One cannot forget Mark as a fitness enthusiast, running and keeping fit. I recall Mark and I going on Bronx Beach some, e some evenings after work to exercise when our office was at government headquarters. The exercise was in the form of one hour walk, four laps from Radisson Hotel all the way down to the former Coast Guard headquarters and back. Mark and I would start the first lap together. But before you know it, Mark, done, Mark had done finished two laps before I could finish one. When completed his last lap, he would pass me with a smile on his face, and he would say, see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow at work. I hope you finish before the sun goes down. Mark, the fitness man. Today, time will not afford me to say everything about Mark's working career, but from what was said thus far, we can conclude that Mark strived for excellence for himself and the department which he served for 43 years and headed for five years. It is therefore became no surprise when Renford Mark Anderson Harper was named among those who received a National Independence Award in, in the Barbados Honorees Independence List of 2023 in the form of National Service Medal. When the announcement was made on November 30th, I called and spoke to him that same day at home and congratulated him on behalf of the department, my family and I, for such a great achievement. He remarked to me on the phone, 
that God is good. That were his last words he spoke to me. Many of, many of his family members, friends, and work colleagues were aware that Mark was facing some health challenges in the latter part of this year. I am glad that at the time when I constantly reminded him that it's time to start going to church and serving the Lord, he visited the church I pastor a few times on Friends Day along with others of my work colleagues. I was happy when he told me that he was going to church and he had accepted Christ as his savior and the church of his choice was the Seventh-day Adventist, which I was very happy. I also encouraged him to settle down and get married, which he did also. Today, as we celebrate the life of Mark and his achievement in the department, he served faithfully, and which was the first security guard that started from the bottom and reached the top as senior security officer. I cannot think of no better way to remember and honor Mr. Harper and his legacy by suggesting to the department that a Renford Harper trophy, trophy or plaque of excellence be awarded to a security guard. The security guard awarded award of the year who meets the following criteria. Deportment, perfect attendance, study skills, a study skill course or courses in security or its related field. According to Trevor Eastman, you should clap for that. We can say, gone too soon. But God always knows the best, and all of us have appointed time with death. And we must ensure that we have that relationship with God, peace with God, peace with yourself, and peace with your fellow man. To Cheryl, to his wife Cheryl, God bless you, and continue to bless you for the excellent work and taking care of your husband during those difficult days. And his sister, for your good support, your brother always spoke very highly of you, and his son, who was also there as a support, his work colleagues, headed by our permanent secretary, the most honorable Miss Ali Jordan, and his other relatives and friends who were there also praying and giving support, his pastor and church family. God's word assures us in Psalms 46 verse 1 that God is our refuge and strength and a pleasant help in time of trouble. And Psalms 23 verse 4, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. On behalf of the Permanent Secretary, the Prime Minister's Office, National Security, the Administrative Staff, all security staff of National Security, we express our sincere condolences to his mother, the wife, sister, son, nephews, cousin, and all the relatives and friends. Rest in peace, my friend, and rise in glory. In the absence of our most honorable Alice Jordan, who is on duty leave, 
the Acting Permanent Secretary, Ms. Wallaber, will now come and pay tribute. Good afternoon, everyone. I recognize our Cabinet Secretary, Ms. Selma Green, our Ombudsman, the Reverend Dr. Nigel Taylor, and our many colleagues and friends scattered across this room this afternoon. On behalf of the Permanent Secretary, the Most Honorable Alice Jordan, I wish to extend our deepest condolences to Mrs. Harper, the children, grandchildren, Mr. Harper's mom, aunt, and his wider family, friends, and colleagues this afternoon. Regrettably, P.S. Jordan is away on duty leave today. She had arranged to attend today and has therefore requested that I present this brief tribute as follows, and I quote, Renford Harper, or Mark, as he was more familiarly known, was soft-spoken but very firm in his manner. He always exhibited the highest level of professionalism and was without doubt one of the sharpest and, the the sharpest and naturally attired persons across the public service, whether in uniform or just plain clothes. No task was ever too much or too menial for him to perform. You only had to ask, and he would say, sure, P.S., I will do it. We worked some long hours in Prime Minister's office during the COVID-19 pandemic, and whenever we were growing tired, Mark was there to help shake us up and keep us focused on the task until it was completed. He had a steadfast work ethic and dedication to duty, two important traits that are fast disappearing in the public service. His 43 years working across many different sectors gave him a most unique perspective on the service and he was able to distill the best of his experiences and bring them to bear in his assignments. To his mother, wife, son and entire family circle, I extend condolences on behalf of the Prime Minister and staff of Prime Minister's office and like you, we will keep those fond memories of Mark alive in our hearts forever. We thank you for sharing Mr. Harper with us for 43 years. He was courteous, caring, committed, and disciplined each of those days he worked with us. Mr. Harper left us a sterling example of professionalism and compassion for us all to emulate. Thank you. Blessed good afternoon. Host ministers, dignitaries in the house, congregation, family and friends. Our evening lesson this afternoon will be taken from Ecclesiastes 3, reading from verse 1 to 9. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to read and a time to sue, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit has he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? This is the word of God. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to face more than it brings If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those who are on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who lost the way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your days don't hear it through There's a place up there for you if you walk around with your heart on your sleeves And if you try to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold When you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your days don't hear through There's a place for people like you mm -hmm. to hold I believe when you taste down here through cause it's a place up there for you I know you're up there so keep doing what you do cause it's a place up there for you
music by De Moore at this time. This will be followed by our second scripture reading. Good evening.
unending love, amazing grace, my chance. Amazing grace and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Amazing Good evening. Second Bible reading is taken from Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and there shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I made all things new, and he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Here ends the Bible reading. We shall stand together as we sing our second hymn, How Great Thou Art. And during the singing of this hymn, an orphan will be lifted. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, Praise the Lord. 
Good evening. My name is Katara, second grandchild of Mark and favorite too. He, he was the best grandfather you could ever ask for. He always made sure me, my brother, and I had everything we needed. He never forgot us. Time was very important to him. He was always on time with value. Once you were going out with him, you had to make sure you were on time too. He always favored me over my big brother. More as he would say, Renako, you're grown, so everything goes to Tara. Hearing him say that would always make me laugh. When I saw you laying there, I cried because I said, this can't be the man who was always exercising and healthy. I expected this Christmas to be the one filled with cheer and joy. I even got you a gift, Granddad. No, it's just there. It's devastating I never got to say goodbye, but Granddad, I would always hold you close to my heart. Rest in peace and rise in glory, Grandpa. Love you always, your favorite girl. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The best portion of a good man's life, his little nameless and remembered acts of kindness and of love, a quote by the famous poet William Wordsworth. Renford Mark Anderson Harper, affectionately known to many as Mark, was born to Violet Clark on September 11, 1959, 
at Ashbury Land, St. George. Father of Ryan Curtin, beloved husband of Cheryl Harper, and grandfather of Renaco and Katara Curtin. Brother of Deidre Clark and uncle to Rashad Clark and Terrell Whitaker. Mark was a humble, family-oriented individual who loved the Lord, enjoyed socializing with his friends and family, and was an avid cricket lover. Journey with me this afternoon as I enlighten you of our fond memories of the man we all loved. Mark gained his primary education at the Mount Terra School in 1964 and after went on to Metropolitan High School. Upon completion of his secondary education in 1979, he gained employment at the Defense and Security Division in January 1980. As a security guard and dedicated 43 years of his life in this field. Mark had a passion for learning and during this and during his career, sorry, completed many courses at institutions such as TVET, BIMAC, and Erdiston, to name a few. In 2011, Mark successfully completed his Bachelor's of, Social, of Science in Social Sciences with upper second class honors from the University of the West Indies KFL campus. Mark was so passionate about learning and knowledge that he often encouraged us to read books during the school vacations instead of playing with toys and watching cartoons on television. Rashad can attest to this, as he often came to Barbados during the summer to spend his holidays with Uncle Mark. One summer, Rashad brought with him a wrestling magazine to occupy his time in Barbados. His Uncle Mark saw him with the magazine and asked, this is what your mother saying you don't hear with? You need to start reading this foolishness and get a book to read. Mark was a sharp dresser. From head to toe, he took pride in his appearance and always, looked, and always loved to look dapper whenever he stepped out. Whether it was a formal function or a social gathering, you could guarantee he was dressed to the nines. On Sundays, Mark would iron his work clothes for the week ahead because, according to him, you never knew when the current would go off. And you could bet, for a man who never used spray starch, those pants seams were always in and sharper than his wit. Mark even insisted Deidre iron her jeans with a seam. Mark was a great cook and loved to prepare meals, but not as much as he loved to eat. Oftentimes, he would visit his Auntie Clarence home for bananas, breadfruit, and yams, as he loved to eat ground provisions and fruits. At the annual Christmas family gathering, Mark was usually the first one to arrive, as he was a stickler for punctuality and always arrived ready to eat. When he was ready to leave, he would always ensure to bring his containers for his food, and you would hear him enter the house asking, what one I got for me here now? Which usually meant to bring the food, the black cake, corn, and sweet bread. Mark loved his auntie's conkeys and often supplied a pumpkin every year to secure his batch every November. His auntie Clarence recalls taking Mark wherever she went as a child and remembers when he was 10 years old he was baptized in the Bible Truth Church of God. One Sunday, during church, Mark began to praise God and eventually made his way onto the platform. What a sight it was to see. After the service, the pastor said to him, young man, you are going to be the next preacher in here. God bless you. He was marked to everyone else, but he was my colonel. May he rest in peace and rise in glory, love auntie. Mark was also a fitness enthusiast and loved running. He usually ran on mornings through the neighborhood, surrounding environs, and competed in various races and marathons in Barbados and abroad. Mark even ran from work to home one evening in his work clothes in his form formative days as a, as a security officer. He loved traveling and often visited his mom, sister, and nephews in New York, where he enjoyed shopping at the various outlets going from store to store, searching for a good bargain. Mark loved to go shopping, but no one liked to accompany him. Because when we did, you simply couldn't keep up with the man. Mark would go to one store and spend hours looking at one thing, to then leave the store without buying it. He was very precise and had to test the quality of the material. Then he, was weigh, he would weigh his pros and cons, whether it was worth the buy after he converted the price from USD 
to Barbados dollars. He would then go to another store to repeat the same process to return later to the first store to make the first purchase. Shopping with Mark was a headache. To Cheryl. Cheryl said, saying farewell to the one you love isn't easy, especially when you're now getting to know that person. In the short time of our marriage, I felt like I knew him all my life. Our reunion was such joy, fun, laughter, and many more. Mark often told me, I am happy I met you. It's always amazing how two people cross paths who almost think alike. Have you ever seen someone lit up to see a person when they came home from a hard day at work just to see his wife? Oh, how I love him. Exercise and reading his Bible were his favorite pastimes. My hun loved the Lord with all his heart. I was happy when he accepted the Lord on that Sabbath. Mark said he always wanted a wife who shared the same faith as him. His favorite words were, communication is key. I guess you all must have heard that phrase before coming from him. When Mark asked me to marry him and I said yes, he began watching videos of weddings every night and would call me asking if I had seen the wedding he sang. He watched these videos for inspiration for his wedding. He found one he really loved, a man named Billion. Don't you believe Mark decided to imitate Billion and did the same thing in order to have the spotlight for himself on our wedding day? It was his day after all. On the day of the wedding, Mark told his son Ryan, who was his best man, don't walk too close, so all the attention would be on him. That was the highlight of the wedding. You should have seen his face with that smell. He was someone very special with a heart of gold, always willing to help someone who was in need. He never said no to anyone and was always a man of his word. If he said he was going to do something, he sure would. Mark adored his sister Deidre. There was never a day he wouldn't talk to her on face thing. No matter how many times they spoke, he always wanted to hear from his sister. His mom was his heartbeat, and he looked after his mom with such great care. I've always said the way a man looks after his mom, he will look after his wife, and that's one of the things I loved about him. I was elated when he received his biggest life accomplishment, the Barbados Service Medal, for his meritorious work in the public service on November 30th at the Independence Day Ceremonial Parade. He wasn't able to attend the ceremony, but watched instead of on TV to hear his recognition for the job he loved and did for 43 years. I also ensured he wore his blue and yellow ribbon during the parade as he really deserved it. Saying farewell to his body on December 6th was the hardest time of my life to see the one I loved go to sleep before my eyes, and never woke up. But memories will always be in our hearts. I still remember his last words to me. I love you, and you are doing a great job helping me. That wink he gave me will always be in my memories, and the last prayer we prayed together. He will be missed. Ryan said, my dad was a loving, caring, and humble person, and was always there for me. I have so many fond memories of him, but the one that stands out the most was the day he got married. He told me, hurry up and do the thing. Don't wait till the clothes can't fit me, that I was next in line. He always gave me advice, and his favorite line to me was, what for a man he will get. And I will always remember those words. To Deidre, her brother was her pillar of strength, of a reliable friend, and a doting uncle. Always there to lend a listening ear are awful words of wisdom. His infectious laughter brightened up the room and brought joy to everyone he interacted with. Mark was a loving son, mom's favorite. To her, he was Marky Boy, her provider and her pride and joy. I remember at his wedding, when mom couldn't find him because he was taking pictures, she began to worry. And when she finally saw him, the joy that filled their faces was unforgettable. The memories we shared will always keep us together. Even though I can't physically hug you in times of need, 
I know that you will be looking down upon all of your loved ones to shed light whenever times get rough. I want to thank you for being the most amazing brother I could ask for. I know it's time to say goodbye, but this goodbye isn't forever. Until next time, I love you, big brother. Mark, you are a God-fearing, intelligent, funny, hardworking, a husband, a brother, a son, a father, a grandfather, an uncle, a cousin, friend, and so much more. We are truly grateful for the time God granted to us with you. Forever in our hearts, until we meet again, love you always. I just want to take this time to mention a few words from the word of the Lord. Mark indeed was a faithful member of the Eastern Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so an entire church is also a mourning. And today for some We stand as the awkward ones in the room. For we are the ones who say we believe in a higher power we call God. A power we claim to have interactions with. A being we claim to speak with. A being we believe hears us. A being we believe who also speaks to us. A being that does things for us when we ask. But we stand apparently as the awkward ones today. This is so because the cold fingers of death have touched one of our own. In spite of our many requests to this higher being who hears and answers prayer. Is it even possible to explain this away today? Who are we as believers in God? We hurt, we cry, we laugh, we die. Believe it or not, we are human beings. But what keeps us believing in a higher power when we experience the same vagaries as anybody else? It was Martin Luther King Jr. who declared, if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. It can be argued that all it takes to die for a cause is bravery. You can feel so strongly about a thing that you are willing to risk everything for it. Bravery. The Buster Rebellion was the largest slave revolt in the history of Barbados, and the rebellion took its name from the African-born slave Buster who led the uprising. Bussa felt so strongly about freedom that he was willing to die for it. Bravery at the highest. But what about dying from what can be considered as natural causes? What do you do when you die from a sickness, even though you believe in a God who is referred to as the great physician? Can I tell you that in this situation, bravery does not help you? I will not seek to tamper with the words of the great Martin Luther King Jr., but I would put it in my own words. Unless a person has discovered the one to live for, you are not ready to die. In case you didn't hear me, let me repeat myself. Unless a person has discovered the one to live for, you are not ready to die. You see, the first thing we all must acknowledge is that we are all going to die. And this is a difficult funeral because Mark was such a decent person. He was a godly man. 
And each of us here today can come up with a list of people who we think should be in that casket instead of Mark. But I want to suggest to you today that because Mark, in our estimation, deserved to live, in my mind, he was better placed to die. Now, we do not court death as believers. We want to live as long as we can by the grace of God. But I'm stating here that when you discover the one to live for, you are ready to face death. This, my friends, go beyond bravery. This is a journey about faith and longevity is not always for the righteous. Death is coming whether we like it or not. Death is coming. Now in my younger days, and now I say that I remember, I heard that Mark started working in 1980. And I was born in 1980. So Mark was working as long as I've been alive, 43 years. That's a long time to be working. So I hope I can retire before 43. But in my younger days, I remember going into the Fairchild Street bus terminal to catch the bus. And you would be standing in line patiently waiting for your bus of choice to arrive. And when that bus came, many, many years ago, I'm not sure it still happens, haven't been in there a long time. But when that bus came, it brought with it a number of entitled people from the four corners of the earth. Who believed that they were entitled to get into the bus before anybody who was standing in line before. Over the barriers, under the barriers, people went through other gates, formed lines outside, placed bags in the bus in the seat to secure seats. It was chaos. You know what we're talking about? Anybody catch your bus in spirituals? Mm -hmm. But I want to suggest to you today that while there is no mad rush for the bus called death, there is a seat with each of our names on it. And there's no need to storm the line because no one can sit in your seat. It is yours. I've come to recognize that as much as I want to live, I will die. As much as I want those I love to live, they will die. I do not need a reason to die. I am going to die. I want to suggest to you that what is important today is being ready for the inevitable. Being ready for the inevitable. Death is not my main problem. Being ready is my main problem. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 12, it says from verse 16, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Have fun. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be? which thou hast provided. So he is that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Man was doing what any proper businessman would do. He was making preparation for a bountiful harvest, but he made no preparation for his soul salvation. He was preparing to live, but made no preparation for that which befalls all of mankind. Death. As much as a plan is needed for life, we need to plan for death. Now, we talk about Job as some fictional character because as far as we are concerned, no one could do what Job did. But let me tell you about a man quickly. There's a man called Horatio G. Spafford, or that was called, and he was a successful lawyer and businessman in Chicago with a lovely family, as the story says. A wife, Anna, and five children. 
However, they were no stranger to tears and tragedy. Their youngest son died of pneumonia all back in 1871. And in that same year, much of their business was lost in the great Chicago fire. Yet God, in his mercy and kindness, allowed the business to flourish one more time. And on November 21st, 1873, it says the French Ocean Liner it took a voyage across the Atlantic from the U.S. to Europe with 313 passengers on board. Among those passengers were his wife and his four daughters. He was expecting to meet them in Europe on another ship. But as it goes, the ship they were in sank and only his wife survived to tell the tale. And as he got the news, this man who was devastated and broken by the tragic loss of his four daughters, it says he sat down and he wrote the words to the song, when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou has taught me to say it is well with my soul in spite of his big loss he still found a reason to live and that was jesus that was not bravery that was about faith Having faith in someone to do that which they are capable of doing is an okay demonstration of faith. But follow me this evening. I want to suggest to you that faith tried in the fire is more than a belief in God. I'm saying faith tried in the fire. It is a belief in a being who is able to do that which you ask him to do, but he does not do it. It is being able to still believe and trust in God when he does not do that which he has the ability to do. Yes, God had the ability to heal Mark. He did not. But it takes faith to still believe in that God. Job, in the midst of his anguish, in the midst of his turmoil, in the midst of his great loss, he reached deep and tapped into faith. He remembered the one to live for. And Job was able to declare in Job 19, verse 26 and 27, he says, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold him and not another, though my rays be be consumed and Job found the reason to live and the reason to live was God and he was prepared to die because he understood that living for God made sense this is the faith of the believer we know death is coming but we are also aware that the God we serve is also coming the God we serve is not going to leave the righteous in the grave we have this hope that burns within our hearts hope in the coming of the Lord to live in hope is to die in hope the way you prepare for death is by living for Jesus Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, he says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He says, For if we believe in God, he says, If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him to prepare for death is to live for Jesus. Well, let me make my final point. Many governments work hard to bring hope to a nation. What does that hope look like? A good GDP, plenty reserves, more electric buses, single-digit unemployment numbers, lowering the cases of NCDs, reducing the poverty index, eliminating potholes, I actually went into one today. You know, and thank you, Lord, nothing happened to the car. But. Growing the NIS fund, growing the population, get more children. Or help housing every last person. 
That is the hope and wish of every government. All of these are noble and necessary things to be achieved. But I want to tell you today that that which he, um, Jesus offers, that which God offers, and the reason for the reason we are the awkward ones, the reason why we believe in a higher power called God is because that which God offers is, is far superior than any government can offer. In other words, we choose to believe the bigger promise. That's why we may stand as the awkward ones. We choose to believe in the one who will provide far superior than any government can provide for us. And that's why Paul declares in Romans 8 verse 18, For I reckon that the, uh, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What is he talking about? Let me give you my final passage of scripture. I am saying the reason we are the awkward ones is that we believe in the one with the bigger promise. And the Bible says in Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Firstly, church, I'm here to tell you that this promise alone takes the cake because no government can promise you a new Barbados. Barbados is what it is. But we serve a God who says he is not just going to promise you a new Barbados or a new house. The Bible says he's promising a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, the Bible says, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And it gets even sweeter. Look at the promises of God he says and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death what a promise no, any government can promise you to lower NCDs, can promise you better health care, can promise you a better hospital but I'm saying only God can promise you no death So when the government is going to promise you, yes, nice healthy food, we're going to do all of this. My Bible tells me that in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump of God, my Bible tells me that this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. What God has promised us are bodies that have no signs of decay. So death will die. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. The Bible says, for the former things are passed away. The government may have the ambition of housing every last person and some may still fall through the cracks. But the Bible tells me, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. It says, in my Father's house are many mansions, not starter homes, but many mansions. I don't think it's just a big bungalow of a house, but the Bible is making a point that there's adequate housing for everyone who wants it. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. It makes sense to live for the Lord. We will all die, but we don't have to die without a hope. Living for the Lord gives us a hope that we cannot even begin to imagine today. May God bless us. May God strengthen us. May God comfort the family today as we continue this service. Let us stand as we have our final prayer. I call on Elder Sherwin to give that final prayer at this time. Shall we pray? A loving Lord, again we we are thankful that we could be here to support the family and the loved ones of Mark. And we ask, dear Lord, that we would leave here with this hope, a hope that burns within our heart, hope in the coming of the Lord. 
For we know weeping may endure for a night, but that joy cometh in the morning. We know that many are the afflictions of a righteous man, but that you deliver him out of them all. And we are asking, dear Lord, that you would bring peace and that you would bring comfort to those who are hurting and that you will help them to find meaning through the challenges of this crucible. I ask, dear Lord, that when time shall be no more, that we all here would have fostered such a meaningful relationship with you, that indeed we will be among those standing on the sea that looks like glass as we sing the songs of Moses and the Lamb. Comfort us, for now we pray. Amen. Our final hymn, And Can It Be?
as much as God in his love and mercy have allowed our brother Renford Mark Harper to lay down the burdens of this life, we do lovingly commit him to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Anybody put in flowers here? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. You put now your school young fella? What we do, and then the sound, one sound, and the tree. As the Bible tells us in First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We turn to our first hymn. 
our first song as a journey through the land. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. 
Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord and thus surround the throne. We are marching to Zion. love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In his mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place, our final hymn, when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all
today we've laid our brother to rest, a godly man, family man, work colleague, church, friend. And I want to especially thank the members of the drill squad for the powerful demonstration of brotherhood. Amen. I've never seen it this way before, but I really appreciated what you did demonstrating your love for Mark in the way that you did. And I pray God continues to bless all of you. We thank you all for coming and supporting the members of the family today. That support needs to continue. Keep praying for them. Keep checking in on them. And we trust that God in his own way will give them the strength to go on day after day. Let us pray as we close this part of our service. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you so very much for your love in the midst of heartache and pain. We thank you for your promise that you are coming again to eliminate death. We pray that you would comfort every grieving heart today. Touch, guide, and direct in all ways we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Please keep praying for the family. Again, we express thanks to the Reverend Earl Dean who made all of this coordination possible. Thank you very much, sir. So may God continue to bless all of you.